Hello, I'm Professor Yang Seung Min. Generally, to increase keratinized tissue around implant or increase aesthetics, we do the free gene java graft or connective tissue graft. Depending on the level of exposed implant or abutment surfaces, these are very important procedures, but clinically we don't have many opportunities to do them or it is not easy to approach them. So in this lecture, I will talk about successful free gene java graft and connective tissue graft the procedures and uh, where we can use them. Today, I'm going to talk about these in this order. First, introduction of soft tissue augmentation techniques. Free gingival graft, connective tissue graft. We will talk about what those are in summary. First, soft tissue augmentation techniques. Generally, the soft tissue augmentation techniques used often include apically positioned flap free gingival grafts of epithelial connective tissue graft and vestibular Plasty. The common part is to increase the keratinized tissue amount, whether you use the existing keratinized tissue or whether you increase the keratinized tissue using grafting, the procedures would be different. And in applying the procedures, we need to have criteria. The criteria and where they can be applied it can be explained. The width of keratinized tissue is one of the criteria. Generally, the keratinized tissue width 5 millimeters or more, and if sufficient lingual keratinized gingiva exists, Keratinized tissue can be increased by APF on the buccal side, and uh, keratinized gingiva width is less than 5 millimeters, and the uh, lingual keratinized gingiva is sufficient. Free gingiva graft is done on the buccal side. If the lingual keratinized gingiva is insufficient, epically position the flap on the lingual side and the free gingiva graft on the buccal side are performed, as you know. Making an apically positioned flap on the lingual side is very hard. So in that case, we divided the buccal side and lingual side. However, clinically, Keratinized tissue graft should be made more on the buccal side. Lastly, if there is a little keratinized tissue, free gingiva graft should be performed first, followed by type 1 or type 2 can be applied depending on the amount of keratinized tissue available. So depending on the residual volume of Keratinized the tissue, specific procedure can be selected. APF for free gingiva graft in increasing the keratinized the tissue. Which one is better? The one you are skilled at is a better one. So if we have a criteria like this, it would be easier to make the decision. The criteria is 5 millimeters of width of keratinized tissue, and I will explain why it is 5 millimeters later. First, free gingival graft. Free gingival graft has advantages and disadvantages. Advantages, most effective. And it can be performed at any stage of implant surgery, stage 1, stage 2, or after the delivery of a prosthesis or during maintenance. 
disadvantages. So an additional surgical site is required. The donor site and the surgical site of implant and discomfort after surgery aesthetically the color of gingiva may differ from surrounding tissue so these are the disadvantages if i may add one more advantage anyone can do it anyone can succeed having said that but you may think i have not done it at all only experienced people can do it you may suspect that but many investigators say general practitioners can do it free gingiva graft is emphasized as they can be done by general practitioners so this is recommended as an optimized procedure for general dentists general features as i said before it is to increase keratinized gingiva and to inhibit a relapse of vestibular depth by increasing keratinized gingiva so a certain band with a certain thickness is in the vestibulum so it prevents the relapse of vestibular depth attached gingiva the amount of attached gingiva can be maintained to the maximum with this free gingiva graft predictably so at the end of the day it is used to promote oral hygiene procedures let's look at one at a time the first thing you need to make a recipient site you just not make an incision you need to make the recipient site tense by pulling the flap so tension is placed on the tissue of the recipient site after that a horizontal incision is made at or below 0.5 to 1 millimeter below the mucogingiva junction after that inferiorly dissection is made you can use a blade or sharp instrument like a periosteum elevator so the flap is dissected inferiorly after that the residual band of alveolar mucosa muscle or connective tissue needs to be removed the receded gingiva so that the graft from the donor site can settle in the recipient site and you need to suture mucosal flap apically to complete or finish the recipient site after that you need to make a donor site in the palace side the size should be made considering the size of the recipient site you need to measure the size of the recipient site using tin foil outlining the graft and you approach the palace side to get the free gingerbo graft it should be two to three millimeters from the margin of palate so the incision line should be positioned at that distance if it is too close it may end up in gingerbo recession Many people struggle when they have to harvest the graft, as you can see in the figure. The working end width of blade number 15 needs to be submerged. That means the depth is one millimeter. So incision with that depth will give you naturally 
the partial thickness dissection of graft. Some portion would be thicker than others. After taking out the graft, you can trim. When you do the trimming, excessive tissue or fat tissue or glandular tissue can be removed. So the graft can have consistent thickness throughout so that when the graft goes into the recipient site, it can be stable. So trimming after taking the graft is very important. After that, the graft is placed in the recipient site using interrupted suture generally. If you look at the figure, there are very important positions of the suturing. Do you know where? If you look at it closely, coronal part of the graft are sutured. In the inferior portion, we don't really do the suturing not to interfere with the blood supply. Most importantly, the graft should not be mobile. Only the upper part is sutured. So using this kind of a suturing to fix the graft, incision and suturing are most basic when it comes to any procedures. So you need to think about how to make an incision and how to do suturing. So this is the basic skill so that you can apply it clinically. There are many different ways to apply sutures. When the free gingiva graft was introduced, it was to cover the receded gingiva. Various sutures have been used to, to attach the graft, including horizontal stretching sutures, a conferential suture, and uh, interdental concavity suture. They are basically matrix sutures. So these are types of matrix sutures, but they have different names. If you look at the figure, you will understand the different names. Horizontal stretching, the middle portion is stretched, and from upper side, if it goes down circumferentially or interdentally, they are called the circumferential suture and interdental concavity suture, but matrix suture is used to press down the graft. The most important thing is the circumferential suture that presses down the graft. They look very complicated. Is there a simple method? Yes, there is. And let's have a look at them using examples. We talked about advantages of free gingival graft. One of them is it can be applied at any stage of implant surgery. If it is too narrow, graft should be done in advance, or it can be done during surgery or after prosthesis. So you can apply it at any time. The free gingival graft in terms of incision suture and flap management, incision in the recipient site, horizontal incision is made, flap management, partial thickness flap is used, suturing, the conferential suture, kind of matrix suture or interrupted suture is used to fix the graft. As I said before, incision, flap management, and suture you need to understand what approaches can be utilized for each, then you'll be able to do it properly. An additional surgical site is required, which is a disadvantage. It is inevitable to harvest a graft, 
So you need to discuss this matter sufficiently with your patient to get their understanding. Next, connective tissue graft. Just like a free gingival graft, there are advantages and disadvantages. Advantages, it can be quickly healed and um, it has good aesthetics. Disadvantages, additional surgical site is required and it is technique sensitive compared to free gingival graft. And also, it takes longer to heal compared to free gingival graft. It is talking about the healing of the inside. The exterior healing takes similar time. Indications, aesthetic improvement, and extraction socket closing, which is not done these days often. In the past, using a CT graft, extraction socket used to be closed these days we use barrier membranes. So apart from it, this is very important procedure for aesthetics. Likewise, donor site needs to be made and not the recipient site. Similar to free gingival graft, horizontal incision should be made first and the second horizontal incision should be made to make a partial thickness flap, just like free gingival graft, the working blade width of blade number 15 is one millimeter. If you make the second horizontal incision one millimeter below the primary horizontal incision, then a partial thickness flap is made, and the thickness inside will become the thickness of the graft. So that's how it is done. Optional vertical incision can be made. A vertical incision can be made or may not. If you are not experienced a lot, a vertical incision is recommended. It is very important to secure visibility, which is very important during surgery. So, vertical incision should be made at the beginning, but if you get used to it, it doesn't have to be made. Now, as you can see, a partial thickness flap is taken, and using various sutures, the site is finished. When you take out the graft, the difference between this one and free gingival graft, bleeding can occur here, and it is very important to understand anatomy. The main source of bleeding is greater palatine artery. It is not cut directly, but a very small diameter arterial is cut. Let's look at its location. It is 12 millimeters from the CJ of the first molar for an average palatal vault. When the vault is deep, it is 17 millimeters. For shallow palate, it is about 7 millimeters. It differs from person to person, so we cannot give you a definite number, but depending on the depth of palatal vault, the important artery position is determined. So if you understand the anatomy, you can avoid bleeding during taking the graft. When a graft is taken out, bleeding occurs. What can we do? There are various approaches. The main source of bleeding is the greater palatal artery. So we need to stop bleeding there. Stick tie is commonly used. The artery is wrapped around using suture to stop bleeding. It's easier said than done. So what we recommend is to cauterize 
the area using an instrument like Bovi. Electric cauterization is recommended for simple hemostasis. If you don't have a Bovi, what do we need to do? There are many different ways. A surgical template can be used to press it down to stop bleeding. Or surgical pack or coke pack can be used to press it down. When it's bleeding, the pack cannot be fixed and it moves then. Or the ligature wire can be inserted interproximally to maintain the form. I don't want to make it complicated, so to reduce discomfort on the part of a patient, surgical stent is used. So when it is applied intraorally, the wound is being healed very well and it is healed. Like this, implant surgical site and the extraction sockets. You can use a non-submerged technique, but if you have to use a submerged technique, CT can be used and the suturing is done to heal the wound and it is healed. Like this, you can close the extraction socket, but there are alternatives. In this case, these days, other alternatives can be used over CT, but here there is recession, which is not good for aesthetics. So augmentation is very important. So CT is grafted around the implant. So labial tissue is augmented to reduce the recession. This is commonly used today, and this is very helpful in terms of aesthetics. And you need to understand the indications for this procedure. So, summary, connective tissue graft, incision, flap management, and suture. There are many different approaches. Horizontal incision can be made, and the trapdoor design can be used as an incision for donor site. And partial thickness flap needs to be made in the donor site. In both recipient and donor sites, various suturing techniques can be used, and additional surgical site is required, similar to free gingival graft. As I said before, I do need interpositional connective tissue graft to increase the thickness of tissue. When we apply prosthesis later, it can improve the emergence profile. This is not the only way to improve the emergence profile. However, when implant placement position is not proper or bone or soft tissue is thin, then interpositional Connective tissue graft can be done to make a compensation for it. It also helps to cover the receded gingiva. Most importantly, it can transform thin scalloped biotype to thick flat biotype to stabilize soft tissue around implants. Also, the approach is the same. Partial thickness flap is made and um, it is interpositioned in the pouch. There are many different ways. On the right, on the labial side, graft can be inserted, or it can be put over the crest, or, or it can be made in the form of a wedge and inserted labially from the crest. So you need to understand how to apply them and you need to identify where it can be used. A trapdoor technique, a door is hung over hinges, so the door is open and CT inside is taken. Horizontal and vertical incisions are made. The technique is used to take a graft from a donor site, as in Free gingival graft or epithelialized 
connective tissue graft procedures after immediate implant placement or after socket preservation of socket extraction socket to close it resolvable or non-resolvable membrane can be used or connective tissue can be used to close it as i said before if there is a big concavity in the labial side ct can be inserted in there and the tissue is released tension free and it can be covered partial or full thickness flap can be used there's a question everything is okay but is there a simpler or easier way to do it yes there is but those two approaches need to be understood first before using an alternative an alternative starts from the basic principles so after understanding those two procedures i will talk about alternatives later summary we need to understand where free gingiva graft or connective tissue graft can be applied after that we need to select the procedures the procedures start with taking free gingiva or connective tissue graft from palate and many people overlook this which is graft fixation that is determining the success or failure of the procedure so graft fixation is highly important you need to make a lot of efforts to fixate the graft free gingiva graft connective tissue graft have been explained how was it this is very important so please uh, watch this video multiple times before you apply it clinically i'm sure this will help if you have any questions please post the questions on the dental site i will do my best to answer the questions i'll come back with a different topic next time thank you very much for your listening